Hey, welcome everyone to another Top 5 Friday. Now this is a list that's been 40 years in the making and I get asked all the time. I was at the grocery store the other day and some dude walked up to me and was like, hey, you're that dick anus that's on that show on the interwebs. What's your favorite uh, Atari 2600 games, man? I'm getting tired of it. So I gotta make the list right now so people will quit bugging me. I, I got a life to live. I, I can't sit here and answer these questions. I can't stop what I'm doing in the frozen food aisle and answer your questions anymore. I have to just get it all out, okay? But anyway, for us old geezers, this is the list that uh, we all been waiting for. Probably not. But before that, we gotta talk about the sponsor of this video, and that's uh, Ridge Wallet on this episode of Shield Chasers. <laughs> Looking for the perfect Christmas gift? Well, look no further than Ridge Wallet. Let's face it, most of us guys, we don't upgrade our wallets. We stick with the same one for a long time. Well, now I've upgraded. I love this thing. It's small, but it's tough, and it has RFID blocking so people can't pickpocket you digitally, which I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it's a thing, and this blocks that. Plus, this thing hurts my butt cheeks all day when I'm sitting on it. This doesn't. It holds up to 12 cards, has room for cash, and has a lifetime warranty. There are over 30 colors and styles. I love this thing, but you don't even have to take my word for it. Listen to the over 30,000 five-star reviews. Now you can get 10% off of this right now, plus you get free shipping and free returns if you don't like it. All you gotta do is go to ridge.com slash chodes. Yes, our code is chode, the chode code. It's pretty fitting, right? Check them out today. Oh, it's Friday night. Don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I could sit here and pick my nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, oh. Top by Friday. Top by Friday tonight. My list consists of a lot of two-player games because that's how I played 2600 growing up. It was with my grandmother. I was the only child in our entire family. I was the only child for a good like seven years of seven, eight years of my life. So, um, won't be that long. Uh, my grandmother though, she liked games a lot. We played 2600 at her house. I'd go there every Friday night because she lived close and we just played games all night on the 2600 and it was awesome. Uh, so that's where my memories of the 2600. I cannot think of 2600 without thinking of that as well. So they're all attached and ingrained with each other. So number five on the list is a little game that I like to call Skydiver. I'm, they, 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 like to, they like to call it Skydiver as well. And uh, this was one of the games we played constantly. Now this game is, it's simplistic but fun, right? Uh, so you jump from a plane and you try to land on these platforms. And the, the closer you are to the ground before you open your chute, the more points you get. And you just try to score more points than, them, than the player two. That's as simple as that. You have different modes. The platforms will sometimes move. Um, there's a mode where you both try to land on the same platform and the first one that lands wins. So you have these different modes and it's deceptively addicting. I mean, it is simplistic, obviously. We're talking about 2600 here but uh, it does have um, an addictive kind of quality to it. Um, and one of the coolest things about it is when you don't land on the platform, you smash your little guy into the ground and you get this, this cool little squishy, crushy sound. It's, uh, it's 2600 to the T. It's, it's that unique 2600 sound that you're only gonna get from the 2600 that we all, have, we all love at this point, right? So, uh, Skydiver, I recommend it if you have a friend to play with, then that's number five. Number two on the... Number four on the list is Air Sea Battle. And that's what we would do, right? We would we, we play a competitive game, get bored of it, and then play another competitive game and get bored with it. And this was, this was one of the ones that was always in the rotation. So it's as simple as this. You're shooting things. That's pretty much it. So you have uh, two little turrets at the bottom and you just shoot everything you can find. And if you're playing competitive, if, if you're playing competitively with somebody else, you just try to shoot as more things than the next person and, and score as many points as you can and try to outscore them, obviously. So it's, it's, it's a simple game. You're shooting planes out of the sky, shoot boats, ships out of the, out of the water, uh, hence air, sea battle. Uh, and sometimes there are things that block the shot that you can't shoot that just go across and create like, different obstacles. And obviously there's, you know, the, when you switch modes, you're gonna get different modes. Like sometimes the turns are still, sometimes they, they move around. Um, so lots of fun uh, if you have an, again mostly if you have another person there with you uh, but I recommend it 
Now, number three on the list is uh, one that I'd never played as a child. Uh, we never had this one, and uh, that's Gremlins. Uh, and I didn't get this one until I started collecting games, and uh, I, I don't remember how I got Gremlins 26 on the 2600, but I ended up, I, I was alive. I do remember. Uh, it was a Craigslist ad. There's a Craigslist ad. That's what it was. Uh, that was Gremlins and a few other ones, and I specifically wanted the lot because it had Gremlins in it, and I needed Gremlins because it's Gremlins, right? And I never played it before. Didn't expect much out of it, uh, but when I played it, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. Uh, even if this wasn't called Gremlins, and it was some other franchise or no license at all, uh, just a generic game, it would still be really fun. So I don't like it just because it's Gremlins. I like it because it's really good. Poor 2600 game, anyway. Because <laughs> let's face it, there are just there are thousands of games on the 2600, and just a lot of a lot of hidden miss, a lot of lot of lot of miss. Uh, it was just boring, and what is this? Uh, but this is definitely not one of those games. They put they put they put a lot of care and and, and love as much as you can with something this simplistic into this game. Uh, it's got two different game modes. So the first game mode is basically kaboom. So you're trying to, there's these mogwai that are trying to jump off the roof and then there's burgers at the bottom. So you gotta do the whole kaboom thing where you're going back and forth, back and forth, trying to catch these little SOBs because you don't want them to land on the burger because if they do, it's presumably after midnight and if they eat this burger, they're going to turn into gremlins. And then what happens is it goes to the next stage and those ones that you let drop that ate they basically have hatched, they turned into gremlins, walk towards you, and it's just your job to blast them. What happens if they go walk over water, they will multiply, and so you have even more gremlins to have to shoot. And if one of those little gremlins gets down to the bottom of the screen, it's curtains for you, you're done. Yeah, you've lost a life, now you gotta start over. And just like a lot of 2600 games, it's, hey, we're gonna just go repeat this pattern as many times and get harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Uh, you just gotta just rack up as many points as you can. So, like 99.9% .9 of 2600 games, it's all about just getting as many points as you can, and it progressively gets harder. And and that's 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 it. That's the game. But it, it is it's actually very addicting. Uh, it's it's hella fun, and I recommend it. It's not too terribly hard to find. It is un, very uncommon. But I guess those two things kind of contradict each other. Uh, it is pretty uncommon, and you know it's it's not it's gonna be more than your normal you know, one to two dollar Atari 2600 game. It's not outrageously priced, but if you can find it at a decent price, I'd, I'd, I'd pick it up if you collect 2600 stuff. Number two on the list is is kind of cliche, uh, and that's gonna be combat, but it, I have to put it on this list as, as cliche as it is because, God, I just played it so much. I just played this damn thing so damn much with, with my grandmother, so we have to, I have to put it on this list. Uh, whether it be the tank modes, or the other mode that we really liked was the airplane dogfight mode, uh, and so uh, it was that that was super fun because you could shoot like across the screen and then it would appear at the bottom. So I'd always like troll and just like shoot randomly and hoping the hoping my grandmother would like just get shot from the other angle. But the whole game is just brilliant, and it's one of those games where you have to have another play, per person playing it. You're not gonna. I don't even know if there is a one-person mode on combat. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played combat just by myself, so I, I don't know. Uh, I really like the mode where your your tanks are invisible until you shoot, because it kind of it offers this element of, of surprise. I'm here. Yeah, before you before you blast somebody, kind of like like a, a bird of prey where you can't you can't fire while cloaked. Uh, but uh, the the yeah, this game is just it's great. I'm not going to dwell too much on it because we all know what combat is. Um, and if you don't, then, I mean, you're, you're probably like 18. Alright, so number one on the list is uh, definitely one that's probably not going to be on most people's lists, but I think we played this game the most out of anyone. As I said, we had a rotation going. Miniature golf. <laughs> miniature, miniature golf. We played regular golf a lot too, but that was, that was so weird. You gotta wind up the club and just let it go and just does this. It, it was fun too. We You, you get, you get any sort of enjoyment out of a 2600 game back then, what other options did you have? You didn't have many options. So when you got a game, it's like you made the most of it. You found fun in it in some way. That's how your brain operated. You know, you couldn't let yourself think, this game sucks. You had to play it, you had to enjoy it. 
And while that was true with kind of, I guess with golf, golf, miniature golf, I legitimately think is really good. You are a square, or your club is a square, and the ball is a square, which is a smaller square. And you have to rear back and hit the button, and the further you are away from this ball, the harder it's going to hit. So if you're way back on one edge of the screen and release it, the ball is just gonna shoot and just like, like a rocket and bounce all across the screen and you just, you oftentimes you have no idea where it's gonna end up. Um, but half the fun in this game is just rearing back, letting it go and just seeing where this ball ends up and then just hearing those, those amazing Atari 2600 uh, sound effects just in full effect when this happens. Uh, and so you you have like I believe like eight or nine courses uh, through the game and yeah it's as simple as you just want to try to get the ball into the hole in as little um, strokes or putts or hits or whatever they call them in golf um, as possible and uh, well the lowest score wins uh, but we would play this game non-stop we'd play it go through it and then we play it again i recommend it it's 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 common you can find it anywhere pretty much uh and it's cheap so uh if you if you can't if you find it for a dollar i would say pick it up because if you can't find it at a dollar wherever you are you'll be able to find it for a dollar somewhere uh so don't get a, don't don't go paying five five dollars for it or something like that uh, but but pick it up absolutely pick it up it's a blast. You know, I have a hard time saying that with a 2600 game. It's it's a blast. But you know, it, it, this is 2600. It's got a special charm to it. It's got a unique charm to it, uh, and you can't really compare it to anything nowadays, other than maybe like cell phone games, simple cell phone games uh, that you play. You know, if you got like five or ten minutes to just kill at a dentist office or something, that was our video games back then. Except we had to make them last <laughs> for months <laughs> more than just like five or five or ten minutes we had to we had to make them last for months the 2600 definitely has its charm it has its place in video game history uh but i my my love for it for the most part all stems from the fact that uh it, it was those those memories i have attached to it with my grandmother so i cannot play the thing without thinking of that so that's one that's one of the reasons why I'll, I mean I will always have a 2600 collection no matter what it will, it will always be with me and um, I still find it fun to this day so anyway let me know what your favorite 2600 games are and hey maybe you think the 2600 is uh, stupid and you just don't get it I mean that's that's cool too <laughs> this video is gonna bomb <laughs>